almost at two o'clock. So you're joining the primary seesaw check-in. So welcome. Nicole's going to be putting up a fun activity to share with you guys here. Nothing's loading on my, I wonder if. I'll refresh. Nicole, isn't it weird to think like a few weeks ago you'd never even done a Zoom session? Well, I did two last year, which is really, I was with Team and Kate for the one, and then the other okay. one was, was just at the end of the summer, so um, really nothing. <laughs> yeah. But now you're just like winning, oh sharing God. screens. and. Okay, I'm stopping sharing because I'm going to figure why Seesaw is all of a sudden not working. Well, there were, did you notice uh -oh. that Seesaw had put out a um, message that they were having some issues yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. It's been up today. Um, my kids have done all their stuff, and but I don't know what's going on right now. Okay, I'm in. It's like romper room when you're looking at the names. I see Holly <laughs> and I see Mel, but I don't see you guys. Your cameras are all turned off. Yeah, show us How your faces. You turn those on? What we could do is you could turn those on and then if you go to the top right of your screen, you can go to gallery view and then you can see everybody that is part of the session. And then we can see your faces. Hey, Sherry, I see Sherry. And Sarah's back again. That's awesome. And I believe it's BVB is back again as well. Gwendolyn is back. This is awesome. Good group. Hey, Sarah, did I hear that you had some news? Did you make any... What's, what is it? <laughs> you have some news or something? Oh, that I'm retiring. You're retiring. Congratulations. Yes. yes. It's exciting. Yep. I'm retiring in, well, whenever this school year ends. Yep. That's it. <laughs> All done. Congratulations. What a way to end a career though, right? Like that's going to oh. be one for the ages to tell the story about how you ended your, how many years? 30. 30 years. So yeah, it's been an awesome run, but uh, it's time to go. <laughs> it's, been, it's really been, this year has been incredible. It's, it's been a good run. I've really enjoyed it. I'm sorry to go, but it's time. You know, they yeah, say, you're you I, I heard that uh, earlier this week and we were saying how great you were with sharing. And then, um, yeah, they said that you, that you'd made it official, that you were, um, retiring so I thought that was pretty awesome and even more incredible that you have all these new learning experience like in the months just coming up to your retirement too right? yeah and then I learned something new today I was just messing around with seesaw and I I figured out how to do a schedule type thing so that I can plan an activity to be scheduled the next day so I don't have to zip out of bed in the morning to do it so I, we're <laughs> I'm learning all the time which is great that's awesome that's one of my favorite features is that you can schedule activities and you can make it look like you posted it bright and early, but still be in bed. I know. I, I'm loving that. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I can have a second cup of coffee before I have to log on. Be <laughs> if you are just joining us, we were talking about the um, awesome grid view in the top right where you can see everybody's face. And so what we're, we're hoping to do today, if we're not sharing a screen, we're going to make it look more like just a chat. And so you can turn on those cameras and a couple of you already have, and then you can just kind of see each other. Um, feel free to keep your mic muted if you want, but then that way we're not just looking at an empty screen. We're gonna actually look at each other and just have more of an informal chat once we're done with a few activities. That way, when we're asking questions, you can see everybody who's asking the questions too. Can you see the SD mystery up? My screen okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm just gonna play this so it just shows um, like the whole thing. So bear with me, I'll just. 
Today I have an ST mystery for you. An ST mystery is where you're estimating, but also solving a math mystery. So today your ST mystery is going to involve touched 100 grid template. Okay. I thought this would go away, but it's still there. So if you want to so guess, want us, what's that? Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so you want us to estimate, right? Yep. So in the chat, if you can um, estimate how many Cheerios you think are in that glass. Oh, I don't know. I count the front <laughs> and double it for the back. Mm. Jan, I think you need to share your story. <laughs> my story. I have to tell you, my dog has not been well. I think I traumatized my dog when I groomed him because, you know, they always say don't groom at home. But I thought he needed a groom. And so the day after we groomed him, he was acting really uh, funky, wasn't walking, wasn't, didn't want to eat. And so we have this little treat ball where you kind of put the treats into the ball and then um, he can just kind of maneuver them from there. So each treat ball holds 16 of his pieces of kibble. And so then my husband challenged me and said, well, I wonder if we just fed him through the treat ball, how many... Um, kibble is in a like a, a scoop that we have a small scoop well to me looking at that shot glass that's about the same size as his scoop and so I figured oh Cheerios look like his kibble so my estimation was I knew that there was about 69 or 70 pieces of kibble because yes I did count them to see how many and there was about 69 or 70 pieces of kibble in his little scoop and so that looks the same as that shot glass to me and so that was when it's not quite full, the Cheerio. So that's yeah, why I, have I went lesson. with 67. I like your choice of glass. Yeah. Well, so we have, <laughs> oh, Cindy has a question. Cindy, what's your question? Yeah, I told her to write it in and if we could get it to after maybe. <clears throat> I didn't think any, you know, kids would pick up on the type of glass, <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, you ready for clue, clue number one? That. So it looks like our highest is Rod at 80, and our lowest is Natalie at 46. All right, so we're gonna, gonna give you clue one. Clue number one. The answer is a two digit number. I want you to use the same 100 chart and I want you to look to see if you can eliminate any numbers now that you have clue one. Okay, so All of our numbers number. are good. Okay, clue two. Can you hear my audio if I play it or no? Yep. Clue number two. The answer is an odd number. We'll have to change. Use the same 100 chart you've been using. And I want you to see which numbers you can eliminate now that you know clue two. So it looks like we're going to have to change some of those guesses now. I got to change mine. So I did this with my own um, children and I have it set up in Seesaw Activity Bank so you can pull it if you'd like to. Um, but they just use the 100 chart template and then they literally just cross off with the draw tool from there and eliminate or they change their estimate based on the clues that they're getting. Right, clue number three. Clue number three. If there were three more Cheerios, the number would be a multiple of 10. So it would be a 10, a 20, or a 30. Oh, man. If there were three more Cheerios. I got to change it again. Look at your 100 chart. So SD mysteries do not leave you with like one answer. They leave you with three to reason through. And Alicia thinks she's right at 77. <laughs> she's sticking. Okay, here's and number Sherry's four. Going this is with the her last 77. clue. All right. This is the last clue. Rod 77 too. The last clue, clue number four. The number of Cheerios is divisible by three. Three, six, nine. Which numbers can you eliminate now? This one was a bit tricky for my kids because they thought that they could just 
Try three, six, nine, not that it have that conversation. They had to know first what divisible by means. That's the last clue, right? That's the last clue. So you're left with a mm. few numbers. When you do a hundred, when you do it on a hundred sheet chart, you can actually see what you're left with. So what yeah, was our mom change, change in mind? We've got four fifty sevens. Okay, so, and then I would ask them to like actually record it and submit it in. And the last clue I wouldn't have given them immediately. I would send it after I've received all of their estimates and then send it to them. So then I took them out and I organized them and there were 87. Oh, Rod, for the win at the end there. He guessed 87. So you would have been, if you had a hundred chart, you would have been left with three remaining ones that you would reason through well, it's not, this one's too low um, and use your more estimation from there. So Nicole, is this in our LKDSB library already? <clears throat> so I just added to the LKDSB library. So again, um, like before I would put it out to my kids, I would copy and edit this and I would take this final slide out and hold that back. Um, but I'd give them the rest of it. Perfect. So Cindy, I hope that answers your question there. And can I just ask a quick question there, Nicole, um, in case Cindy wants to try and make some of her own like this, um, you used which uh, creative tool to do most of this? The draw tool. Okay. So you just uploaded pictures and then you added your text and your voice right in the draw tool. That's right. Perfect. Awesome. So if anyone can make one of their own, you can show us next week on our draw. So time. Nicole, have to did you send Short more than one video in the too. Seesaw Activity Maker then? So. I didn't. I recorded my voice. Okay. So it's actually not video. It's just a picture and that I um, put in, uploaded, and then I just recorded my voice. Super. So I'll just show you, like, I don't know if, if any of you have heard of Steve Wyborny's Estimysteries, and they are so good. Um, and I just tweaked one of his that was on there and I made it my own and I just got Cheerios, something that the kids would connect with from home. And um, so if you're looking at a resource for any estimation activities that you can tweak and make your own on there, um, here's his Steve Wyborny. I mean, you can follow him on Twitter at Steve Wyborny. And he also has Instagram. And then the other one is Andrew Stadel and he does estimation 180. And if you, those are two really worth the ones. If after today um, you wanted to look at a resource that you could use to connect learning at home, those are two really good resources for estimation. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Nicole. So do we want to, are you done presenting about your um, estimates? Do we want to take some questions? See, so what I love right now, Sam, is my view is in the, mm -hmm. the grid view and I can see everybody who's here. Cool. I just see a whole lot of names. So if those are gonna, Cindy, you're popped up. Hi, Cindy, I can see you now. Oh, mm -hmm. Natalie. And Natalie's there. <laughs> and it's so cool because now you can actually see people. There we go, look at all the faces. Hi. Pam's there. Yay. Hi, Pam. Hey, Kelly. Hey Kim, there we go, Gwendolyn. See, this is great. I love this. Now it looks like I, we're all here together. I think I like it that way that they're all out and then they just randomly pop on. Yeah, and then it's like people are very, there we go. We're getting people, hi everybody. Wendy. All right, so this is great because if we're not sharing slides, what's really nice about this is we can see each other and we can uh, unmute the mic. That's my hashtag for the last couple of weeks. Uh, hashtag unmute that mic because uh, just uh, it's easier, right? Just to chat and have a conversation. Same as like you would with your staff meetings if you're doing that. Um, so is anybody have a question they wanna start with? Anybody wanna share a success, an awesome? Cindy, we can't hear you. Do you wanna? Looks. Like maybe her mic isn't working. I don't know what's going on. Oh, oh, we can hear you now. Just turn it up yeah. a little bit, maybe. Oh, we had a bit there. All right. Yeah, it shows her mic is on. It's just uh, the volume's not catching up. Uh, Cindy, in the bottom corner next to the microphone, there's a little up arrow. 
And if you go in there, you can go to the audio settings and just make sure the volume's it. turned up. There we go. I don't even see you guys anymore. Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Oh, well, that's not how I the meeting, but I can hear you, but I don't know what's going on. I'm going to push the read to All right, well, she gets that figured out. Cindy, let us know if we can help you or whether you do it in the chat. Does anybody else have a question or a success that they want to share from their week? I have an entire class signed up and they're all active and doing things every day. I feel like that was a big win. Yay! That is a huge win. Natalie, that is, that is awesome. Good for you. Do you want to tell us something I'm, cool you're doing? Um, I'm getting a lot of ideas from LKDSB and um, within our own school, there's a little shared drive there. So everybody's sharing. It's very awesome. I think the other part is a lot of kids are sharing their teaching, uh, the, the learning that they're doing at home. And when they connect a picture, you're like, here's my dog, but then they write more than they would ever write for me normally in the class when they show me their dog. So their connection between home and school right now is very powerful. That is awesome. Thanks, Nat. And are I you having them share with each other what they're doing too? No. Yet, ask them to share a picture of them to say hi to their friends. But the part that's holding me back is the whole equitable and inclusion and maybe there's too many why questions happening in my brain and what if. Mm -hmm. I keep trying to look at it from all angles. I've created a collage, but I haven't hit send yet, just yet. Um, I'm not 100% comfortable with I just highlighting maybe things or having questions about, I'm trying to think about how a parent's going to see this because there's a lot of eyes looking at things that yeah. aren't happening in the classroom that are happening at home. I'll take anybody's advice on that. What do you think? Can well, that'll be something for us to think about yeah. then for the week, right? That'll be like our challenge for the week. So when we come back next Tuesday, Hopefully we have some ideas for you, Nat. Thank you. Sam saw me unclick my mute. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about audience. <laughs> thinking a lot about audience this week. And so like, you know, when we are presenting things, we're learning, we, we're, we have our class as audience, but we're learning about them as a new audience because they're different when they're far away from us. Probably some of those kids that were pretty confident and, able to eager, be eager beavers in the classroom because you were giving those little nudges along. They felt confident and now you're not there. So maybe they're a little bit more cautious. So our audience has changed a little bit or like, you know, students have found their voice because they have an animal to help them out, right? So like all of those pieces, our audience has slightly changed. So if you're looking at the collage, why are we the ones that are selecting things to go into the collage? Could the students share something that they want to put out? So just switch who's producing the product so change the audience from you creating it to then over the last week do you have something that you would like to share with everybody so that they have their voice being told something like uh, that. one thing that i did this uh yesterday i just posted a message um to my kids i have some kids obviously that aren't doing aren't participating which is fine but i just sent them a nice nice note to say hey just wanted to see how you were doing um, hope you're well and uh, just to give them an update on what I'm doing besides schoolwork and uh, I got a lot of response back from kids that haven't done anything yet so that was really nice to reach out and just let them know hey I miss you I hope things are going well for you um, you know a quick a picture of your face or something fun just to touch base and I got a lot of response from that so I was that was something that I think is nice to do and and like my kids are great too, but they're missing their, their friends and they're missing their teacher. So 
So I, I'm glad that I did it. So if that helps, I hope it does. You know, it's great, uh, Sarah, you're so right. And that's one thing that we've really been talking to a lot of the, the teachers that reach out to us about. And, you know, I was in the intermediate and even the intermediate teachers were talking about doing read alouds and how their kids there, you got grade seven and eight kids who just love to hear or see their teacher. And uh, that's it. Age, I don't think matters. I think it's that connection piece. So I think it's great. And that's your way of just being able to say, hey, I'm here and how's it going? And it's okay to go slow because, with the, you know, it's like the go slow to go fast. If we can get them all connected, Natalie's got them all connected. You're getting them all connected. I know you were talking before. I don't know. Was it nine or something last week that you had had connected? Uh, yeah, actually eight. And then it dropped off on Friday and then it went up again uh, today. So, you know, baby steps. And um, I'm happy with that. That's awesome. I heard from a, a child today. I heard from, yeah, so... I think that's progress for sure. It's a huge win. Yeah, for sure. Can I, when, can I say when something? I'm so, I love what she just said because I'm reading, I, I think I texted you guys about this last night. I was reading this article last night and it talked about the importance of like individual check-ins and how, like for some of our kids, if we reach out individually to them, you know, they're going to want that nudge. They're going to want feedback back on their next steps they're going to want more 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 and for some they really do individually to reach out to just be like hey how are you what are you doing you know like what have you been doing during your day like what are you simple 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 things that aren't even connected to the schoolwork and how something like that would just go such a long way for them right now um and i know teachers that's so hard for us to think right because we're just uh, we want to get this this and we want to like, it just that when I read that article I just like screenshotted it and like highlighted a million things because I was like yes like yes this is so important the idea of just maybe checking in as a whole class isn't isn't where <clears throat> what is going to work right now maybe we do need to do it individual and kind of think about you know that piece and the kids we know who struggle the most at home on a normal basis like you know, how are they right now? What are they doing? They're probably not thinking about multiplication right now, right? They're, they're just trying to survive. So, so yeah, so that really spoke to me. So I'm actually super glad that you said that, Sarah, because it was a good time to, to talk about it. What was really neat was what you were sharing. Um, I had thrown out that whiteboard.fi app and there are some limitations to it with, it's free to join. You can send the class code and she had done a number talk and so what she did was i think she got nine in the 120 minutes that it gives you to do your activity so she screenshotted them but then that gave her the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with nine kids and so it while it started about the math and about the strategies they were doing then they were offered a chance just like sam and sarah said like hey how's it going like tell me what you did this afternoon right and it was just a, a an open door to nine kids while chatting just through a simple number talk that she had done on the whiteboard app she did a quick screenshot and then she sent it to them and said hey let's chat if you want mm -hmm. and they all took her up on the offer and nine of them were able to talk when mm -hmm. i see you said in the chat it was pretty excited yesterday for the first time you were caught up and you could actually stop working when it was still daylight i know there's other people on this screen right now that have had that same thought uh, I feel like if I'm awake, I'm at work most days. And that's the problem, right? When we're home, it's so easy if we're just sitting around to pick up that computer and just keep yourself busy. So we have to remember, and I have reminded a few other teachers to, you know, even set a reminder on your phone and it needs to be like in big block letters that says, stop working right? Like, and it's just that reminder that says it's okay to take time for myself, get outside, go for a walk. Pam, she's been sharing with us and on her Instagram, all of her houses in her neighborhood. Like that is the neatest thing. And it's just that opportunity to just take time for yourself. So Gwen, I'm happy that you took that time for yourself to make sure that you got out during the daylight. And you are nervous about trying to do a Google meet with your class for the first time. You're anticipating some tech issue problems and solving the demands that will happen. So you know what? just have no expectations. Just if you connect and they say hello, then that's your success for the time, right? Who has done a Google Meet already with their class? Can anybody I talk? I can share a story from this morning. Perfect. <laughs> so I had met, like I had always been a part of Google Meets on a reg, like on a daily, well, weekly basis with our staff meetings, but I've never actually hosted one myself. So I was watching um, Kaylee and um, Emily's presentation on Google Meets. 
So I set one up today with five of five grade six, seven students and we had tech issues. And then we had issues where I had to log out, log back in. I had another two students who had to log out, log back in. But we hang it out together and getting through it. And now I feel a little bit better about Thursday meeting with them and sending them out of Google Meet. And I even tried last night. I thought, okay, I'll send them the Meet link and then they'll, they'll choose that and, and log in today. Well, that link didn't work. So I now realize that I have to just log on. I can email them the link right there. And then we can like, so kind of, you have to troubleshoot along the way too. And like, you're gonna, I was up front with them and said, you know what, I'm new to this and you exactly. have to bear with me. So, so when what my daughter's but, teacher's doing is only sending the link, she's logging in and only sending the link 10 minutes before it starts. Yeah. So that's what she's doing and saying anybody who wants to join. And honestly, it was just them sitting there talking for the first time about how's it going. I'm glad you got on. I'm happy to see your face. And that's all the expectation was. So there can be your first one, right? And I know you're in a rural area, so Wi-Fi could be an issue, especially with wind like today. But uh, I am excited next Tuesday to hear how your Google Meets go. Have you scheduled one yet, Gwen? No. Okay. So we let have us Tanya, know how it goes then. Tanya in the chat said she did, her, she did a Google Meet for the first time yesterday. And she had lots of feedback from parents that it really lifted their child's spirits. Aw. Tanya, can you tell us more about that? Would you be willing to unmute the mic there and chat with us about what, uh, just what happened in the Google Meet? Was it a very informal, what grade was it? Yes, uh, it was very informal. I'm not coming on video because I have not showered or done anything yet today. <laughs> no worries. Um, but yeah, it was very informal. Um, I had all but five kids um, come to the Google Meet, so that was awesome. Um, and we basically just took turns sharing uh, something that we've been doing since we've been out of school, um, and the kids had an opportunity to say anything to their friends. Did I miss so what grade it was? Really it was? What grade is it, Tina? Oh, sorry, grade one. Okay. Awesome. So yes, did you just send your message through a parent inbox and just let them know that that's going to be happening? And Yeah, so la the end of like I just sent uh, a message out saying that I was planning to try and have um, a Google Meet and said Monday at 10. Um, and then around 9.30-ish, nine I think I sent out the link. That's the one thing I don't know how to, like, can you schedule yeah. a Google Meet or do you have to send it out, like, log in and wait for everybody kind of thing? You can. Mel, do you want to speak to that? Or um, is Mel willing to speak to that? Mel will speak. Come on, Mel. <laughs> sure. So the easiest way to do it is if you go into your Google Calendar and you create an event, and if you, so I do grade six math not every morning monday to thursday so i go in and make an event i say grade six math nine o'clock um, i extended the link from the first day i did it to june 27th and so it's the same link all the time i posted that link in seesaw so they just go to seesaw click math I did the same for the grade four, five, and seven math, and I did a link for a six, seven language. So they just go to that link every day. It's exactly the same thing. And uh, um, Google Calendar minutes before my next class. That's handy. Yeah. So just to, to, to uh, interrupt there, I know there's a few people who are just messaging me and there's one in the chat, Gwen as well. Um, if you have to go for the Lexia training, thank you so much for joining us. We're here every single Tuesday at two o'clock. I just do know that the Alexia training is coming. So if you are leaving us now to head over to Lexia training, we will see you next Tuesday at two o'clock. For the rest of you who are not going to the Alexia training, we can continue. Um, I was hoping we could um, cycle back. There's two things I've been I'm writing notes as we go along so I don't forget. One is a question in the chat. At, uh, I think Sherry was asking about scheduling events or scheduling activities. So I want to make sure we get to that if she hasn't already had that answered. And another thing is, not yet, she's shaking her head no. Okay, we will get back to that. And um, what we were just talking about was like around the feedback piece. And that was a big topic in our chat here last week and I just we talked a lot about like just reaching out to parents and, and seeing like you know how is how is it going we I was just curious how did that go did anybody get a chance to do that did anyone get some feedback like was it helpful
I know at our school, um, one of our teachers actually sent out a, a survey, I think it was Survey Monkey, and asking parents, like, did they feel like this was too much work, too little work, you know, just the right amount? So it gave parents an opportunity to sort of say, hey, I'm really struggling, you know, by the time we both work during the day and get back to, you know, our kids at nighttime, they don't want to do it, stuff like that. So, it kind of helped you sort of know every parent's perspective and where they're at. And I just kept assuring my parents, you know, don't worry about it. Please don't stress over it because right now our health is, is of paramount importance over yeah. anything we're handing out. Just do what you can. And, uh, you know, so that really helped parents, I think, know that we're, you know, we were reaching out and just kind of trying to figure out where they were at in, in their child's learning too. So. I think that really helps you be responsive to their needs because then you you know for your families okay I'm gonna stick away from Sherry and maybe lighten the load up a little bit for their family but you know for um, Sam her family wants a little bit more and is doing really well so you can be responsive in that way too. Okay and now let's let's hit up um, Sherry's question just because she's been waiting patiently for this and I don't want to forget it and she just answered so you get like precedence now. Great. So. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Sure. She'd love so, to <laughs> Nicole, are you going to share your screen then for that? Yep, I will share my screen. So just give me a second here. Perfect. While uh, Nicole's sharing the screen, Siri, can you see all of us? You were asking. Yep. Yep. I can see. Okay. Oh, Siri. I thought you were. Siri. Oh, Siri. Okay. Yes, I switched to my iPad from my phone. That's so all. Is it, so is it you're not able to see the grid view from your phone? Is that? I didn't, I didn't see the option, but it could have been, I'm just used to doing it on my iPad, but I've right. gone on my phone today, but I'm Does anybody sorry have that, that answer? Do you have a grid view from your phone? Rod, do you know? I know on the no, grid view. Was in and out. It's, it's limited on, on the phone. I think it's, uh, you hear the speak, you see the speaker and it'll alternate and jump around from speaker to speaker, but I don't believe okay. you have the option to do the grid. Okay. Thank okay. you. That's, thank you. That's why I couldn't find it. I'm sorry that I, had to help one of my kids for a minute, so no I was worries. in and out, but thank you. All right, is it Sherry? So yeah. you go to a sign activity, like to where, wherever your activities are, and you're going to go assign. And then right down there at the bottom, do you see there, it says schedule. Okay. And you just tap that schedule and you can put what specific date you want it to be assigned, what time you want it to go out at, and then you press your check mark and it will do that. Perfect. And if so you, if I, yep. Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was just gonna say, if you wanted to make sure and what you've scheduled, do you go, do you see over here to the right where it says scheduled? And you click yep. on that. I don't have anything scheduled right now, but your list of activities that you've scheduled will pop up there. Okay, so if I'm creating an activity, let's say I've created an activity, but I don't want it to go out to the morning. Is that button there once I finish creating an activity? Yes. Okay. So you'll see it pop up in your bank, like my bank here, right? Right. And then once you create your activity, it'll just have that green assign. You just click on that assign after you're done creating it. You just go down to the bottom, press schedule, and you schedule it when you want it to go. So Nicole, I just like this Pam speaking, yep. um, Seesaw gives you lots of different options of how to do things. So um, that's one place you can do that. But was it, Sherry was just asking about as she's creating it. If you scroll down on your creating your activity list. Yeah, so Nicole's gonna show you that and I'll talk her. You just, so if you start one, there's, keep scrolling down to the bottom. Okay. And see that more option piece? Yes. Okay, so scroll down some more there, Nicole, I think. That's all that's coming up here. Uh, yeah, that's all I ever get come up on my oh, okay, because I have usually get, once it's, you know, maybe once it's in there, usually you usually get to have the calendar about that. And then back in your journal view, you go back to your journal view, those three dots, which I feel like we should be teaching people those three dots right off the start because they are your edit buttons. <laughs> it's like, where's the undo button? Um, so in your journal feed. So three dots here. Um, yes, yeah, so three dots there. So if you click the edit the activity on that, 
you should get scroll down through there more options so no nope. oh, maybe click the edit word click the edit that's just for the students that you're assigning it to yeah hmm. so i've edited it there for sure like gone in there and edited it um on the timepiece. What device? So there's this are you one here on? under your this teacher notes. There it is. Assign there it on. Is. But oh, I that's yeah. one that there I assigned. Is. That's one that Already? I assigned immediately, yeah. Maybe you have to give it to someone and then you can go back in and edit it. But I have had it where I've assigned it immediately and I thought, oh no, it's like ten yes. o'clock <laughs> at night. I don't want it going out now. So then exactly. I have went back into it and I've it edit it but the thing is you have to delete it of what you assigned so oh, okay so that was the other thing you have to delete it out of what you've assigned yeah. but i guess the big message is is that CISA will give you different places to add or change things and edit so if you yeah. forget to put things in the file folder or you want to add a note like there's lots of you can always go back and do that yep just uh, can i can rod just jump in here just for a second with a technical support tip if you're on a, a mobile you can actually slide your finger on the screen and get past that one um, camera so you it, on an iphone for example if you just uh, slide across you'll see the different uh, camera views will come up of the different people that are in the discussion okay i'm wondering if um i don't see any new questions in the chat if now would be a good time to to a uh, good uh, friend, a teacher. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for having okay. me, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm just gonna share. Okay, so again, I'm essentially I'm introduce myself. Uh, Gretchen Sands Gamble. I'm the Elementary Indigenous Education Special Projects teacher. So um, I created with some help from Nicole Hooper and from uh, Jim Gilpin. Um, we have created some resources that you guys can use in your classroom to make sure that you are sharing um, Indigenous perspectives and content for, for your students. So I'm just going to share my screen here so that I can show you what, what we've been working on. Um, so in the Seesaw, um, activity library for our for the Limited Kent District School Board we created a scavenger hunt and it includes Ojibwe words in it so it's the Zeke one scavenger hunt and so Zeke one means spring in Ojibwe so um, so this is activities so you can save the activity um, to yours and I guess we can go through it really quick um, let's see if I can get this to work it'll it'll Play your voice, Gretchen, but you, mm -hmm. it, I think we have to be on Seesaw to play it. Okay. The book will work right from the oh, link, here but we this go. one... Well, okay. here we go. I'm in Seesaw right here. All right. So here we go. So what it is, is it has... Um, it goes through nine words with pictures that are in Ojibwe, and, and it has... Um, <laughs> so in each... Each page has something. So. Oh, I don't think the audio maybe was shared on your screen. Oh, you can't hear it? No. Nope. Oh. Okay. Well, there. Oh, you can trust me. There it has the uh, the Ojibwe word. Um, so mean copy. But you can see what I'm showing you, right? You can see the. Yeah. The, the. Okay. And so then for the last page here and in the seesaw there's a template here so the kids are encouraged to go out and actually go outside and to find these things so wawaskwana a flower a minkan a seed a saswan a nest and so what we nicole and i were talking about is like using this um kind of as a learning commons uh, activity or it could be for your classroom too to go out and snap pictures and to uh, put those pictures in the different squares in the template or if they don't have a camera they can draw draw those um, pictures in there. But there's also uh, a challenge too, to be able to practice saying those words and to rec record themselves, say it would like. So that's when that is available to you in Seesaw. And it's um, Earth Day, so to, tomorrow is it Earth Day? Yeah. Yes, Earth yeah, tomorrow's Earth yeah. Day. So that's a really great, a really great activity for tomorrow too, to get the kids outside. 
Um, so this year was done by uh, Jen Gilman, and it was something that she was working on with her class um, before the March break. And so what it is, it's um, again using the Ojibwe language. And so this is in there too. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, so I try to share it. Um, but what it is, is they made pictures using a technique on pic collage to make their animals look like Eric Carl animals. And then uh, we book so that, or she made the book. So I actually that. noticed that Jen is on. So Jen could even talk to us she as well is, here. Yeah. She is. But, yes. Yeah. I don't know. Can you hear it okay or no? No. No? Okay. So then we have somebody reading it. It's actually my son. And so he's saying the words. So he says the words that go along and then it goes through with those Ojibwe words for all of those animals. So there's the challenge here or the uh, activity. Listen to the story. Use the drawing tool to draw your animal from the story. Use the T to type and record your voice to say the animal name in Ojibwe. Um, this is something that you could use in your class. You could change it up if you wanted to, change the activity if you need to, to something else for your class. You could have them write a story and instead of about one of the animals, and instead of saying rabbit in the story, um, they could write the word waboos instead. So just those practices, those, those language pieces there. Um, let's see, I'll go back to the slideshow. We also have um, here, it if you you don't use Seesaw, but I'm pretty sure everybody in here is using Seesaw. There's also a Google Slide uh, version of it, so people can use um, that way to add the, the pictures and, and listen to the recordings in the Google Slide. Um, I'm available. Like if teachers want to email me, or I, I can. I don't. I don't want. Uh, I can come and join your Google Meet. Get that going. I can book to your class. I can come in. I can share stories. I can. I can. We can talk about different ways that you are able to, um, to to share Indigenous perspectives in your classroom. So I'm here for that. So uh, one more thing I wanted to share, but I'm having trouble seeing it is in the way. Um, I have a coloring sheet here that I'm able to share with you guys. So Moses Lunham from Kettle Point, uh, he's uh, Anishinaabe from Kettle Point, has said that he would share um, some coloring sheets for us. And so they We'll be going out with um, the paper package, but we could use them in Seesaw too. And so I can share a link for one of those. I'll put it in the chat actually, and I'll put the, the link for the, um, the Google slide in the chat as well. So you can go to it and you can use it in your, your class if you want to. Um, my son's teacher has included a coloring sheet here and there on her Google. I mean, um, she just posts the picture and then you can just, um, what she has said is you can screenshot it if it's a PDF or you can just open it up in a drawing and then you can just color it on there. And I, on, when I was in, in the classroom too, I really like to have kids use the um, coloring sheets because they, I'm not a big fan of coloring really. Like I never was even when I was a kid, but I would have the kids use them as uh, writing prompts. So write a story about what you colored in this picture, right? Or Sometimes even we would use them in art and talk about the different kinds of lines that they could use and they could color um, color in using different patterns, uh, different styles. Let me see here. Okay, so yeah, I'll add that into the chat and you guys can use them for Earth Day for tomorrow if you want to, or you can just use them however, however you see fit for your classroom. It's like Christmas. No, it's like Oprah. You're just giving stuff away. That's very. Thank you to you, Nicole, <laughs> and to Jen for that. So uh, that's awesome. And we have been able to hear it. So uh, Gretchen shared it with our team just earlier this week. And so I, uh, I do encourage you to check it out. It was, it's really cool. And the expression that Colton reads with is just awesome. So it's, it's, it's funny, such yeah. a neat project. Yeah. And Jen's class, they did an awesome job. Um, writing or drawing or making the pictures using um, pic collage too. So yeah, and and they knew the words too when they were writing them because I, I was in the classroom when they were drawing the pictures and I would say, and how do you say turtle again in Ojibwe? And they, they, knew, they knew the words to use. So yeah, it was a really cool, really cool thing to do. 
I was just going to ask that. So the 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 collaboration was done before March break then. Yeah. So those those pic collage pictures were done before and not remotely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They were done before. Um, I'm just curious, do we have any outstanding questions that haven't yet been addressed? Um, if you want to write those in now. There's our awesome link to the color machines. Thanks, Gretchen. You're welcome. If somebody could try it now and let me know if it doesn't work so I have time to, uh, to fix it if it doesn't work for you, that would be great. I will open it up. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's anything that comes in the chat, I, I wanted to also touch on one thing from last week. We talked a lot about um, read alouds. That was a thing that people seem to have a lot of questions about. Um, so I'm just super curious. How did they go? Did anybody do one? Did anyone try one? What did they use? What are their thoughts? Because uh, this is good feedback for us too. We can hear kind of what others are doing and share it with teachers who email us and ask questions. So anybody want to come off mic and tell me about it? I'm wondering, um, I noticed Teen, you're on. Last, yesterday, um, Terry shared how she puts her read aloud in just, it's a voice over, so they, they're only hearing her voice, her audio to it. Was that in a folder in Google Classroom, Teen? Hate to put a Teen on the spot. I'm trying to, you might be changing yeah, I'm around. trying to see if there's anybody else that might have been part of that intermediate meeting. Um, so what has Terry was sharing, she has a grade seven, eight, and they love read alouds. <laughs> and so she said that she puts it in a, I believe it was a Google folder. It, it had its own folder and the kids could click on the link and, um, and she's just reading the book to them. So it's not real time. So it's not something that they have to be um, connected to in the moment that she's reading it. So she's re pre-recorded it. Has anyone else tried to read aloud, either real time or through a recording? Not yet. So there's your challenge for the week. We want to see you before next <laughs> Tuesday. Try a read aloud or try like a poem or just something, right? Just to get your voice in your your face out there to the kids. So if you are willing to try that, we challenge oh. you and we'll hear from you next Tuesday. And Can also you just said she uses Shadow Puppet. That's right. Tanya, you shared that one. Did you share that with us last Tuesday? You were the one that kind of brought out the conversation. Yeah, about the reload. Oh, Steph, I did one using Spark Video. Steph, would you be willing to tell us more about that? Sure. So um, I just took pictures, I used Spark Video and took pictures of the pages of the book. And then I went back and just recorded my voice reading the story. And then I could also pause along the way if I wanted to make a little comment about um, the story, like if I was reading it to the class or focus in on something. And then I just uploaded it into Seesaw. And, and now how long did it take you to do that? Just for anybody who's not tried that yet. Um, it was pretty easy, like with Spark Video, just did, I just had to take a picture of each of the pages. So I mean, that in itself took, I don't know, maybe seven minutes. And then you just go back and you just read each page. And yeah, so just as long as it takes you to read the book. The awesome. uploading, um, I'm out in the country, it was a little bit slower. Um, so that took a little few minutes to upload it. Um, but uh, but it was really, I had done one where I video, uh, actually a few initially where I videotape myself holding the book. But the problem with that was um, the kids can't always really see the book so clearly. So by taking the picture mm -hmm. on the Spark video, they could see the pictures of the book really clearly and then just hear my voice. That's awesome. Now, I Teresa, like I see you said also you do one each day. So how are you doing them? I can't hear you. Nope, we can't hear you. Can you unmute? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was on a desktop um, following along and um, I was just able, I kept trying to get 
get on through my iPad, but it was saying something about a US address. And anyways, I've just successfully done that. But um, I find the read, -al read alouds are very successful. I just go on camera like, you know, and I have to watch because you only have 10 minutes. Um, I did a wonderful one one day and I went to upload it to Seesaw and it said, cannot upload because you're over the 10 minutes. And I checked it, it was 10.01. So <gasps> oh. I was like, oh. Uh, so I did figure out how to chop a little tiny bit off of it so that I didn't have to redo it. I was pleased about that. So you know how this is all a learning experience. And uh, but I, I have really positive responses with the stories. Like I, I feel like that's what's pulled, you know, the, pe the students and the parents in. And they'll even show it to, you know, their younger siblings. And um, it's unnerving because it's new, right? Never done that. And, you know, you, I practice, cut, practice, you know, delete, practice, delete. And I'm like, okay, I got it. Now then I go through it. And, that's you know, great. it's it's the best we can do, right? Yeah. That's all we're doing. And that's yeah. awesome. Like, I just thank you for doing that, right? Like, I can just see the smile on your own face there, right? Like, yeah. you know, you're connecting with your kids. It's that your opportunity just to have that time with them that we otherwise aren't able to have. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Feels I just wanted Everybody... to address something. Oh, go ahead. No, nope, no problem. Okay. Everybody's doing their own great things. Mm -hmm. so. It's nice to hear about everybody's own great things. Yeah. I want to address something in the chat. I think it's sorry. Um, she mentioned that she's had some mixed messages around read alouds and she's wanting us to clarify please. So I'm wondering if you're meaning like around copyrights or things like that. Is it sorry? If you want to chat or talk Yes, sorry. Or... Yeah, it's Sari. Um, okay. Yeah, well Ben had said we just needed to indicate the title and the author and the publisher's name. But then one of our teachers, her sister works at a different school and they're saying, no, you need to email for permission. And we just wanted, Kelly Goldsmith and I have been talking back and forth with Rachel on that. And we just wanted to clarify to be sure we're doing what we should be. But if you can, if you know what to advise us on that, I guess. I, I'm i gonna go with, if what Ben said is, it's probably okay. I don't, I mean, it's, these are yeah, the, like, go ahead. I wasn't doubting that. It's just, I think Kelly Goldsmith can maybe clarify and I have to go right now anyway, but I'm um, sorry. That's okay. Um, but I just know, like Rachel said, that her sister, as Elizabeth has told her different things that Tecumseh's getting that information, you know, and um, I'm thinking maybe on the Facebook grade one group as well, you know, people talk about needing permission, like the email right from the publishers or something you know I'm so. gonna look into that for you and then what I'll do Sari and I'll you, email you Thank Kelly you. and Rachel and Elizabeth and mm -hmm. then just get some confirmation awesome. on that so I'll send that email to you as soon as I get the answer yeah okay and maybe next Tuesday more of the people yeah. on here may want to yeah. know that too Absolutely. if you know if it's concern of others I, I'm guessing so okay thank you I must go ladies see you soon thanks Sarah thanks for coming and, uh, and Pam shared a good point sorry Nicole I just want nope. to share what Pam wrote in the chat um, and it connects to um, with it Teresa who had a read aloud but then cut it off like just yeah. over the 10 minute mark. Um, I was thinking the same thing about how you could also just spread that over two to three days like you know pause it and leave a cliffhanger and then leave a question at the end what do you think is going to happen next and, and then you don't hit your 10 minutes and then the kids are like oh my gosh I don't know what is going to happen next. So um, you could do that too just if you're especially if you're playing with that like time limit piece so but go ahead Nicole. Um, it's okay. You're good. <laughs> Did you see what Jen and Rod both said there? So Rod saying he thinks Canadian copyright revisions include fair use and will likely cover the read-alouds. And then Jen shared that in keeping our read-alouds into our Seesaw class, which is closed, it's not a YouTube, so it's less of a copyright concern, which is what she thinks Ben shared. Yeah, and Ben also added to that, if you, at like in June, you get rid of those off of your Seesaw as well. And then you're protecting yourself too. Yeah. And you're not so using them you, for like public public use. You're just using yeah, them like for, just your, for your class. class. So. And if you when you're creating them, if you maybe save them to a read aloud folder and then they're That's all in I one do. place. And then after it's maybe a little bit easier to get rid of them. To get rid of later. Yeah. 
yeah, I've been keeping them in a folder mm -hmm. and just in Seesaw and I show, you know, and I talk about this is written by this, you know, the author and just yeah. to give recognition. I hope that helps. So. Pam just shared a link yeah. for Penguin Random little... House. Yeah, Pam, yeah. Do you want to talk to that? Well, I was just saying that a lot of the publishing houses have put out statements about that. So I don't want to read the whole thing to you, but if I put in one example of Penguin uh, Random House and they're encouraging people to do it. A lot of issues come up when we use the YouTube function. So it's about, you know, if we put it in YouTube and then we put it out in the world, like Pam Gallant reads books, then they can font put that out. I'm, that's where they're starting to get a little dicey about copyright, it seems like. But what you said about in-house in, in Seesaw is one piece. Nicole said about, you know, putting it in the folder and we discard later and then saying verbally what we have. So, but, you know, it's always good for us to do our own research and to find out. So that was just a little example of one that you can find there. Mm -hmm that because you know story is the best way to learn can i just ask one question about the read aloud um when you were doing it did you videotape it yourself or did you have someone videotape you actually doing it because i know when i was doing my message to the kids i kept messing up just holding on to the my ipad to try to do it so i mean just to save me some time i know now that you've taken one for the team and done it for yourself. Can you give me some advice about that? Okay. Um, I just set up my iPad and then flip the camera and I'm on a, at a little desk, just like I am right now, and try to have a, a plain background. So I would have, let's say the book here, I'm reading the book mm -hmm. and hold it up and start the video and, um, yeah, I talk to them a little bit before. Usually, try to give them a little positive message, and then I read the story, and then you know you have the the pictures, so you you know like you hold it up, and I count five in my head to make sure they've seen the pictures as I turn the page, and I try to make it as much as if I was in the classroom because that's what we're trying to do is keep some of the things as much as we're able to you know something they can make a connection to so it'd be just like me sitting there reading a story and then I save it just on um, like as a video on photos on my iPad and and then I up I go to Seesaw and upload a, a video where you would do the uploads and I feel like it's okay because it's right just right in Seesaw and uh, mm -hmm. trying, hopefully I don't get in trouble no you're, you're gonna be fine <laughs> oh that sounds great that sounds great good yeah. for you for doing it thank you i did a practice one and i had an elaborate setup of like the ipad on top of books and that wasn't high enough and then i got the step ladder out like you know, put, put that all up and then i was just like i'm too far away and it was just a mess <laughs> so scratch that and ended up the best thing was I just put my phone like this. Over, I put the book flat and I just held it over, and I read Perfect. the book. Yeah, like it. But because you know I was doing all fancy, not working. Yeah, that makes <laughs> well, sense. Okay, great. I'll try it. Yeah. All right. So I'm looking forward right, to hearing I'm, you next Tuesday. Yeah. Then, Sarah, I want to hear how it goes. Yeah. Oh, but no, I think introducing the book and I'll try it. and. Yeah, introducing the book with your face is important too, but once you get going, like what's the most important thing? The beautiful art and the picture books, so adapt it. All right, sounds good. <laughs> good luck. And if there's anything any of you want to, um, like questions for next week or something you want us to look into before next week as well, just write it in the chat or let us know and um, we'll have that ready for next week. We are getting close to our time, ladies, already. Mm -hmm. Is there anything anyone else wants to share or ask before we say our goodbyes? Any cool ideas? Um, some people were having difficulty logging in for the coloring sheet, so I just put a new link on there. I just was working some Google Drive stuff here, so um, if you want to try that one, uh, you might not have to be signed into your LKDSB for that one. If you are, I have no idea what, what I need to do. <laughs> it worked fine for me. I just, I have two, like I had a Gmail and an LK one. So I just had to make sure that I was in LK. So 
in case people do have issues and they maybe they email you or something just yeah. say have you tried you know you're making sure you're in your okay but as soon as i was in that one it worked fine okay so yeah okay well i don't see much more in the chat so i think that means we're off the hook for the, uh, another week <laughs> But as always, if you guys want to get a hold of us, like feel free to reach out. We are here all week and we are happy to answer any questions or troubleshoot things for you, brainstorm with you, like whatever it is that you are up against, we are here to help. And um, yeah, you're, you're doing great things. This is awesome. So I'm super, I'm super impressed. I just love connecting. Anyone? I love seeing you guys too. So that's yeah. awesome. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's see you next yeah. Tuesday at two o'clock. And if you have any questions you want, you can either put them in the chat now. If uh, we're closed, you have our emails, you can just email us and yes. uh, we'll bring up those conversations just like Sam said there for us for next Tuesday at two o'clock. Yeah. Thanks awesome. everyone. Thanks for coming everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Yes.